Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I arrived on my archaeological bullet train um, for 96 weeks and 10 minutes. Let's see how we get on. Um, now, I thought it was worth giving you some background to this site, because not all of you already know about it. Whitefriars um, is the furthest west of Perth's four friaries. Um, Carmelite, founded in 1262, um, located beside the Long Causeway, which was the western access route into town. My involvement with this site begins 34 years ago in 1982, when I ran a manpower services scheme excavation um, in advance of the first phase of industrial development of this site. Um, we were there um, for eight weeks, um, and we found the eastern end of the Friary Church and part of the East Range. Um, notice how much things have changed in the last 34 years. A site tour, um, no fence, no high vis, no hard hats. Uh, happy days. <laughs> If we scroll forward to 2008, a planning application was submitted to Perth and Kinross um, to demolish the joiners' workshop on the site next door. Um, a planning condition was attached for some evaluation um, and follow-on excavation as necessary. Um, you will note from the plan that I have put on the screen um, that to the right is what I found in 82, which as I've said already is the east end of the church and the east range. It's the rest of the friary. So we have the rest of the church, the west range, the south range, the graveyard, uh, and God knows what else. So, in 2008, um, this was Suat. We were there um, for eight weeks with a team of six. Um, and face plan there showing you what we got. We got the rest of the Carmelite phase of the church. Carmelite phase shown in green. Um, the entirety of that building. Um, a rather curious wall um, heading west from the end of the church. Part of the cloister, the top of the west range. In red, you have the Bishop of Dunkeld's rebuilt church. The Bishop of Dunkeld takes over the friary as his headquarters for almost 100 years because he was having problems in Dunkeld with Highland raids. Um, that takeover by the Bishop has quite a major effect, to put it mildly, um, as we'll see shortly. So, we started work in 2008. We revealed what I've showed you in that plan. We discovered 102 burials um, from the church, and including a phase of post-Reformation burial. People are being buried there after the friar is gone, which is rather intriguing. One Friday afternoon, my mobile phone rang, and it was the developer telling me to stop, because he could see um, how much money it was going to cost him because of the amount of burials that we had. Um, besides, the recession had just bitten. So we were closed down. Um, after two or three weeks, um, the Heritage Trust pointed out that if there was going to be no more excavation on the site, it needed to be covered in geotextile and backfilled. That's what happened. Then, in July 2014, I got an email saying, um, I think I'd quite like you to get back on site. Um, I, I think we, we'd like to move things on. Um, but can we meet and have a discussion about this? So we met uh, in the Royal George um, and had quite an extensive conversation. Um, the upshot of which was that yes, he wanted to get back on site, but he would like it just to be me. Because then he, he had a regular bill coming in there wouldn't be a sudden explosion of cash. Um, so, July 2014, um, I reopened the area that we'd opened already, stripped the topsoil off the geotextile. Um, initially, with the help of my son Fergus, who you might see top right there, that succeeded in putting him off archaeology for life. <laughs> because he was shoveling soil off geotextile. Um, but he's a sensible guy. He's now doing engineering at Strathclyde. Uh, 
Um, so, having got back on site, I knew that there was part of the church that we haven't been able to look at in 2008. So I thought, well, you know, I'll deal with the other 20 or 30 burials that are going to be there, um, and then start considering the rest of the site. Um, currently, um, burial count from the church is another 205, um, which gives us 307 in total. But just to give you a few tasters of what we've been getting, um, this burial here inside the church, this looks female um, from the diagnostic uh, bones that I've looked at. It's got a jet necklace around its neck, still in situ. Um, five jet beads, one yellow glass one. Um, quite unusual, to put it mildly, for a medieval Christian burial. Um, lots of wooden staffs. That's in inverted commas. Um, with the earliest phase of burial in my church. This is green wood. The bark is still on the wood. Um, I think this has been laid when the burial has taken place, and I think it's symbolic. It's not functional. You couldn't use that as a staff. It's not thick enough. Symbolic of what? I have absolutely no idea. Um, time will tell. Wooden limbs. I've had a couple of burials where bits of the body are missing, like the bottom of an arm, for example. A bit of wood has been put in the position of where that bone will have been. It doesn't look like an artificial limb, it's just a bit of wood. Um, but it means that when that body is buried in the grave, it's entire. Uh, and I think that's probably why that's being done. Um, parallels for that are proving very difficult to come across. Shoes, a um, couple of burials with shoes on. Um, I use the word shoes here very lightly because these are soles from shoes from different shoes. So you have one sole on one foot and one sole on the other. There is no upper, there are just little straps. So I think these are probably supposed to look like sandals. Um, and also notice the position of the hands. Um, I think that might be quite significant. Um, I have no idea what these things are, and nobody else has either that I've shown them to so far. Um, look how small they are. Um, and that's where they were in the grave. Um, I've yet to get this material analysed, but I do wonder if it might be wax. You often get wax patterns or wax chalices, very good patterns. Could these be symbolic of, of croziers? Um, that's certainly what the shape reminds me of. Um, under the south wall of the Carmelite church, we have a woodline grave. But this grave doesn't have a body as such in it. It has a body that has been moved to the grave, and then the bones have been laid out to look like a body. But the ends of the uh, leg bones at the top are pointing out instead of in which was a bit of a giveaway. I thought, hang on a minute, that can't be right. Um, so there's some translation um, of burial going on there. Okay, we got to December 2015, and as, as Moira mentioned, uh, the weather on this site has been entertaining, uh, to put it mildly. I was shut down uh, December 2015 um, due to the water conditions. And I didn't restart again until April because by then the water table had dropped um, and it was felt that, that I could carry on. By that stage, I had got to the western end of the church. Um, most of the church to the east of this point had been dealt with. Um, I had to move all of my human remains, which are being stored in plastic boxes, into new storage uh, down by Perth Harbour. Uh, I had a very interesting conversation with the man in the storage company when he asked me what it was I wanted to store. Um, it didn't seem to be particularly bothered, but anyway, that's where they are now. Um, just by chance, um, and, and thanks to somebody at the Heritage Trust, um, they pointed out to me that one of the stones across the road and the insurance company that people have been using to stub their fans out in is actually a water stoop. Um, and I think that's probably come from the church um, at some stage. Um, and I'm getting further burial um, in the extended bishop's church. Um, now, the first unusual thing that I found at the west end of the site is a water supply. 
Friaries need water um, to supply the rear door to the toilet lock, um, and various other buildings have running water in them as well. They are bringing water in down that yellow channel that they've marked in there from Wells Hill, which is on the other side of the site. Um, at the top of the hill, there's known to be a well up there. They are taking that water down onto site and then moving it around uh, into various buildings like Building A up there that I found in 1982 um, that has water quite visibly at some stage has been coming out of it. Um, so some quite interesting water mechanics going on. Um, and tentative evidence that there was a, a red pipe in there at some stage um, that has been taken away. And from this pottery, from that feature, um, that certainly has to be a 15th century date. That's rare and stoneware. Uh, it's a rather nice piece of decorated German stoneware. Um, again, at the West End, because the bishop has extended his church, the West End of the earlier church ends up being sealed under the bishop's extension. So the West End of the Carmelite church is still standing till about that high, um, which is quite remarkable. And on that corner that has the rather nice Ashland blocks, there are a couple of Mason's marks. Um, there's a cross in the top one and a T in the bottom one. Um, the cross at the top is also present on the stone bridge um, that Suak found in the excavations in advance of the Horse Cross Conference Centre which is right next to Blackfriars. Um, so quite interesting as to whether we might have the same masons being involved in the various different ecclesiastical houses. Um, more burials um, in the extended church, um, right the way up to the west end. The stones that you can just see at the top of the slide, that is the western end of the bishop's church. It's right in the section um, of my trench. <coughs> This is where I am at the moment. Um, I said this will took 307 tons of barrels already. Um, I had two people for a few months and they concentrated on the West Range uh, and I have a much better idea of what's going on in there. Um, so far, my small find count as of yesterday, uh, as of Friday, um, is up to 1708. Um, but I am small finding in each bit of pottery because I'm not getting that much pottery. Um, and that's what I still need to do. Why do I have another building disappearing off the end of the West Range? Um, what can it be? And if I am asked to look at the whole of the site, then I have the South Range and the remainder of the cloister and possibly the graveyard. No, I haven't found the graveyard yet. No. Um, just to sum up, here are a few um, rather intriguing things that I've been getting uh, in recent times. Um, back in July, um, I started to pick up um, some quite substantial pieces of wood. Um, and I really didn't understand what on earth was going on at all, because they kept going. And I ended up with a two and a half metre square wood-lined grave with the planks still in position, containing three people, um, an adult in the middle, who as you can see is remarkably tall. He's actually so tall that his feet were sticking out the end of the grave. Uh, they weren't able to fit in a sideboard, uh, but they obviously miscalculated that. Um, and he has an iron bracelet around his wrist. The other two burials on either side, uh, they're much younger, um, and they're possibly male. The one um, to his right had a wooden staff. So staffs are still appearing, even in the later graves. Sorry, I'll just rush through. Um, what I'm doing at the moment, um, I have some unexpected industrial activity, which seems to predate the building of the West Range. I think what I'm getting are welfare facilities for the people building the church. There is no industrial waste. I'm getting the old bit of animal bone. It's all low temperature. So I think this is where people have set up camp, basically. This is where they're living on site. 
um, while they're doing the building works. And um, I'd like to thank Historic Environment Scotland for taking their high spy camera out of Mothball to come along and take some rather useful um, high spy shots of the site. I'm still there, uh, and I might not have been there for quite a while. Um, so if you're ever in Perth, um, do drop in, uh, not literally. <laughs>